so if you're anything like us, you're probably always wondering, like, is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? Are we bullish? Are we bearish? And although no one has a crystal ball and, you know, can predict that or tell you, uh, we got David today who's going to look at some charts, look at some indicators, and just have a peek at what's going on in the markets. Now, David, you know, I, I think probably worked with over 100 Fast Track clients by now. Fast Track is jam-packed with really high-level investors. And so we're always in these conversations almost every single day. So what I'd love for you to take from this video, if you're watching, is just kind of like your own thesis, like grab what works for you, but also run it through your own filter because no one has a crystal ball, but we are going to look at markets overall. And we're going to zoom out even outside of crypto to just get an idea of what is happening. And is it a good time to buy? Is this pullback an opportunity? What should we be doing? David, take it away. And thanks for joining us. Thanks, Lucas. So, you know, what I'm thinking about now, Lucas, is in October, November, December, January, February, March. So October, November, December of last year into Q1 of this year. What we saw was the big blue chip assets, Bitcoin, Sol, ETH, start to run higher. And then there were a handful of market leaders. And those market leaders were really the AI coins and many meme coins. But we saw most everything in crypto run higher. But what I think we could be seeing now is the start of the next leg up in crypto. So if it turns out that the lows are in for BTC, if this turns out to be the low here, same thing could be true here for ETH. We have, of course, moved much lower on ETH, but if the lows are in here also in ETH, and if the lows are in for Seoul right here around 120, then what we need to focus on next is which coins are going to lead the next rally, which coins are going to be the market leaders moving forward. And I think that it could be some of these AI coins that have started to run again, you know, maybe something like Tau or maybe something like Spec that's had a nice little move to the upside. Maybe we could take a look at something like Fetch with this nice looking inverted head and shoulders pattern. You know, there are a handful of AI assets that have started to move higher. It's not just the AI assets though. We could take a look at Sui. Sui has had a really nice Sui's run my higher. best friend right now. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. You know, but not just Sui, Arrow. Mm -hmm. Arrow has started to move higher again here also. And you'll notice I'm analyzing these charts, Lucas, using a log scale. And I think that that's important moving forward because if it turns out that we are in an exponential phase of growth for crypto, then we need to be viewing these charts on a log scale because exponential growth means user growth and exponential adoption, which means also an exponential growth to prices. And so I want to be viewing these charts on a log scale. Can you explain that, that to anyone watching? Yeah, so log there are... There are different there are different ways to um, set your scale here on the right hand side. So if I uh, of my chart here, so if I just go ahead and right click on this, Lucas, and change this to a regular scale, and then double click to bring this into view. Let me go ahead and remove these drawn objects real this quick. This is what so most that, people look at. Like this is kind of the default view. Exactly. This would be you know the the default view when you type in arrow USDT on Trading View and you view the futures contract, this is what you're gonna see. But I think that if it turns out to be true that crypto is in an exponential phase of growth, then we want to be viewing these charts um, in a log scale, which is more exponential than a regular scale. And I think that we're going to see exponential rates of growth in terms of user adoption not just of arrow, but of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So I wanna be viewing my charts on a log scale so that I can more accurately project, hey, where is support? Where is resistance? Where do I see price potentially heading from here? And so what I've been doing is just making sure that my charts are in a log scale here. I hope that that if, answers If anyone question. watching wants like a 10 or 15 minute masterclass on a few things on how to read these charts, let me know and we can always slot that in for some content. Um, yeah, I love it. And I'm, I'm really also a big believer. I think this is a moment we've been waiting for for a long time is when will crypto get to the point where the everyday person can start on ramping onto crypto? Um, in fact, I kind of like regulation as well, not over-regulating, which probably is the 
and effect of any kind of regulation, but it's just like, how can it be perceived as safer? Uh, we were applying for a loan for an investment I want to make, and the broker I was using said, I showed them how much crypto I have. So they said, let's just leave that off. You haven't, you'll, you'll be okay for the loan without showing it because they instantly don't like it. And I'm like, when is that not going to be perceived the same way? It's Bitcoin and ETH. And they don't, the banks don't even want to see crypto on balance sheets because they kind of shit kind of throw out the application or they, they put it down the pile. And I'm like, that's so crazy to me that they accept cash USD in a bank account, but not Bitcoin. It's wild to me, but I'm waiting for that day because then we'll just see exponential growth for sure. It's because they can't custody crypto yet, Lucas. So, you know, what we saw here in the United States just recently was uh, the Bank of New York Mellon was granted special approval to custody crypto and it mm. looks to me like blackrock wants to diversify its custodian um, away from just coinbase for its ibit product they may want to have bank of new york mellon custody bitcoin for them for their ibit etf product hmm. super interesting so what you're yeah. saying here is if it is you're seeing kind of bullish times ahead from your, I think so. from your analyst, from your um, analysis here, I do, I do, and so you know when I'm looking at Bitcoin here, Lucas, I'm thinking to myself, well, is it possible that we will not have diminishing returns this cycle? And if that is a possibility, well, then you know BTC could easily hit 300k. Yeah, you know, just taking a look at the chart, viewing it on a log scale and using previous cycles to project moving forward. Hey, if we run up to 300K, I want to be not just positioned in the blue chips, but I want to be positioned in some of these much smaller assets and in particular sectors. So I'm looking towards AI, I'm looking towards RWAs, and surprisingly enough, Lucas, I'm also looking towards memes. Yeah, we're gonna have a video. Now, for, for everyone watching, we're going to have a video specifically on memes. So stay tuned for that. That's coming out in a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. I, I want to make sure everyone catches that because even though the memes are very high risk, hey, you know what? If you go into it knowing that it's high risk, but you set your ranges appropriately and you go in prepared mentally properly to deal with the volatility that memes inherently have then you can do extremely well if you're prepared properly. So I think what you're what you're telling people too, if I hear this right, is I remember my first bull run and Bitcoin was shooting up like crazy, but everything else I had was shooting up three times more than Bitcoin. It was impossible to not make money. And then when the top hit, Bitcoin obviously declined, but everything else crashed harder. So what you're saying is, if you're seeing bullish times in Bitcoin, not a bad idea to, if if you're looking to take on maybe a little bit more risk, but see higher returns, you're placing a safer bet while things are in a bullish market because everything kind of makes money. I'm being very general. So if you have a smaller portfolio and you want to see more than a two or three X, you're looking for the 10 X plus could be a good idea to start diversifying your portfolio if you're aware of the risks you're taking. Yeah, the risks are really important to understand. And you also have to think about, hey, when is the right time to push some more chips in? You know, when you don't necessarily have to go all in, but I don't think that now is the time necessarily to be, you know, DCA. Uh, for me, I want to be taking risk here. I want to be adding more capital to my positions and to my DeFi portfolio and to my DeFi business. You know, now is the time, in my opinion, to be adding risk because I think that the risk return here is in our favor. So when I see Bitcoin pulling back to its 200-day moving average, I think, man, this is an important level of support. Mm -hmm. As long as we hold here, I think we move much, much higher. So I you know, so I'm too. looking at me too. Will I get? <laughs> I'm looking at Bitcoin here, and I'm thinking, man, you know, this is an important level of support. Let's see this hold. But mm -hmm. I'm not just viewing Bitcoin in a vacuum here, Lucas. Mm -hmm. I'm also looking to traditional markets to help me, mm -hmm. you know, gauge what is the, you know, the sense on the street here. So when I look at the S&P and, you know, I don't want to be viewing the S&P on a log scale. I want to view it on a regular scale. But when I look at the S&P here, 
I, and this is the S and P futures, the CME S and P futures. Mm-hmm. I see a big gap here, and gaps tend to fill. But what is the um, catalyst that could potentially bring us down to the fifty six forty? 5670 area, something like that. I think that it could be the payrolls report this Friday in the United States. Um, so that payrolls report, uh, that could be the catalyst for some volatility, which I think is a buying opportunity. Mm. You know, when I look and I see what happened when the Fed cut rates for the first time, um, you know, cutting mm-hmm. by 50 basis points, that is a large rate cut. And that's I don't think you're going to slow down either. Like I don't it think it's, it, that's slowing down. It doesn't. Soon. It doesn't look. It, you're right. It, it yeah. looks like, in fact, not only will we not slow down, but um, it's being priced in mm-hmm. that at the November meeting, we could see. You know, the current target rate is four seventy five to five hundred. Mm-hmm. So another twenty five mm-hmm. basis point rate cut is being priced in with a fifty seven point nine percent probability right now, mm-hmm. but. There's another 42% chance here of another 50 Big basis one. point cut in November. So that would be a full 100 basis points of cuts. Yep. Um, you know, wouldn't leading into the end. Yeah, They're it wouldn't idiots. surprise me like, either. They got to do something. Yep. So what that tells me is that the Fed is willing to support markets regardless of the cost. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if this sparks another bout of inflation, well, the Fed wants to support uh, markets and the Fed wants to support labor markets. So they're willing to aggressively cut rates. And by aggressively cutting rates, they are making monetary policy much easier. And easier monetary policy means more liquidity in the system. Mm-hmm. And crypto is a function of liquidity. Mm-hmm. So as long as we see easier monetary policy, and we see equities markets in the United States rallying to fresh all-time highs, then I think any pullback, not just in equities, but also in crypto, is a mm-hmm. buying opportunity here. Really? So this is when I want to be adding to my positions. Aggressively. Get rid of cash as quick as you can. Cash, cash actually nowadays stresses me out. And when I see these rate cuts and with what I think is going to happen, I want to own less and less cash. I just want to get rid of it because... 10 years from now, I'll be happy. And if you have cash 10 years from now, you will not be happy. Um, If you guys want more videos like this, do let me know. Uh, we can always produce more videos like this. If you want conversations like this, like every single day, and we're talking high level conversations, some of our fast track clients have over a million dollars in their portfolios, which would tell you that they're not really effing around. Uh, then check out fast track. I'll put a link below. And if not, then subscribe to this channel and let us know if you want more videos like this. We're happy to keep producing them for you. I think zooming out and just having that high level thinking on the markets is such an awesome skill. And David possesses such a great, great way of doing it and presenting it. So really hope this was valuable. And with that said, check out a video we have coming around meme coin pairs, the risks associated with them, but the potential returns Uh, in the comments. If you want to link to that video, do let me know and I'll drop it for you when it releases. With that said, David, thanks for your time.